It's the biggest revolution since, well, the invention of the car. An automotive makeover so radical that at first it sounds more like science fiction. No more petrol, no more pollution. All you have to do is just add water. And in this race, the finish line is in sight. The world's automakers are spending trillions on systems that will change forever the way vehicles are designed and powered. There are three quarters of a billion automobiles in the world. Think of it, 750 million vehicles doing this every day. Burning oil, burning money, polluting our skies. But now, a century after it first spluttered into life, the car as we know it is on borrowed time. All those cars are running on diesel, biodiesel, gasoline, natural gas, and they're all fuels that are based on carbon. And there's no way out of it unless you change the fuel. And that's exactly what the big car makers plan to do. Auto industry analyst Jim Hall says they're gambling trillions on finding a new fuel, a fuel that promises pollution-free motoring and a whole new type of car. This is the biggest bet the industry has ever made. Every time you take the dice and roll it at the table, you're spending two or three billion Australian dollars to do it every single time, and there's no guarantee it's going to work. In this high-stakes game, the smart money is on hydrogen. This is wonderful. It feels like I'm piloting a spaceship. I'm floating. This is General Motors' hydrogen concept car, the Highwire. At $8 million a piece, it's the most expensive prototype in history. How am I driving? I'd say you're pretty good. You picked it up pretty quick. It's quiet and it's pollution free. The internal combustion engine and gasoline cars have had a great run for the last hundred years. We've had great freedom, great fun with the cars, but I think uh, we're moving into a new era. And the fuel cell and hydrogen really represent that. General Motors technical chief Byron McCormack says hydrogen is the logical choice to replace petrol. There's lots of ways to make hydrogen. We can make it from any source of electricity, so wind power, solar power, hydropower, geothermal power, nuclear power, all of those things become possible sources of transportation fuel. The high wire is based on this concept, which we call a skateboard for obvious reasons. Basically, everything that makes a vehicle move and controlled is inside this skateboard. General Motors has already spent a fortune developing its hydrogen engine. And this is how it works. Inside the skateboard chassis are fuel cells that produce electricity when hydrogen gas is combined with oxygen. That in turn powers the car's electric engine. The only byproduct is pure water. What's the end game for GM? What's the end game? Sell more cars. <laughs> <laughs> but is it is it to take the car out of the environment equation? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Zero pollution is the goal? Absolutely. Achievable? Fuel cell cars do that, so, so that's absolutely, yeah, that's what we're targeting. It's something you'd never expect to hear from an automaker, but these days they're all chanting the same mantra, cleaner and greener. The seats that you sit on are soya-based foams. That means they're endlessly recyclable. Over at Ford, this is their version of the future, the Model U. It too is hydrogen powered and virtually every component from the ground up can be recycled. The panels of the vehicle are soya based and even the tires are corn based. Corn? Yeah, and think about this, the, the oil and the transmission fluids are all sunflower based. That's amazing, yeah, it's like it's, a vegetable patch. Yeah, and it It's greener like than today's motor car like and it's also a lot smarter. I'd like to adjust the air conditioning, so climate control. Climate control. I'm cold. Turning up the temperature two degrees. That's pretty nifty. That's great. I'm in charge. I like that. Just how sincere the big car makers are about going green remains to be seen. They talk about saving the planet from global warming, but their cars are getting bigger and bigger and using more and more fuel. This is General Motors' latest Humvee. It's a military vehicle that weighs a whopping three tonnes and gets just 2.4 kilometres to the litre. Now, why on earth would anyone want this for city driving is beyond me. Is GM really green? Yeah, of course we're really green. You only have to mention one word. Hummer. Sure. It's a, it's a car that has terrible fuel economy and you're selling heaps of them. 
Well, uh, there's the message. Our customers want them. And if we don't supply those vehicles that our customers want, somebody will. And I think you see a, a worldwide trend. In Australia, you see people are buying a lot of power. They like cars that perform. So and deliver a lot of CO2 to the pollution and contribute uh, to global that's, warming. That's the, that's the classic dilemma. Do you think the car manufacturers are sincere about going green? No, I think they are uh, sincere about it because they realize one way or another they're going to have to do it. The problem is if you do it and do it poorly, you put people off the technology. And there, everybody that's involved in this game is aware of that. The motoring industry has already had its fair share of lemons. When I think of electric cars, I think of them as a golf cart. Oh yeah? Well, try this. That's extraordinary power. This is a battery-powered car, once seen as motoring's great hope. I got the car for the environmental responsibility. But once I got the car, I fell in love with it. It's got such wonderful performance. It's so fun to drive. Professor Donald Aitken's enthusiasm for battery power isn't shared by many car buyers or car makers for one simple reason. These vehicles need constant recharging. This sporty EV1 was dumped by General Motors after extensive trials. Why did you abandon the EV1, which is a car that I've driven and just found extraordinary? Uh, the EV1 was uh, a great car. Uh, it was a great sports car, fun to drive. Uh, it had the limitation of the batteries. It was always about the batteries. While electric cars have their limitations, there is a place for them in congested urban areas like Tokyo. The Japanese call this the Ecom, and all you need is a smart card like this, which will get you behind the wheel of a little electric runabout like this. It's like a personalised form of public transport. You don't actually own it, instead you simply rent it to make short trips around town. But for a serious alternative to petrol, all bets at this stage are on hydrogen. Where am I going to get hydrogen? I'm confident the ultimate solution's got to be using your own tap water and your own electricity to produce hydrogen at home. Toyota, which sponsors this program, has developed this concept car. It looks like most four-wheel drives, but under the bonnet, it's a whole different story. Pete, this is where all the magic happens. It may look like a conventional engine, but it's completely different. Under here we've got a fuel cell which combines hydrogen and oxygen, creates electricity, which drives the electric motor. It's that simple. Toyota's Peter Evans says hydrogen vehicles will satisfy our hunger for size and horsepower without the guilt. There's no rule book that says you have to limit the power out of a hydrogen powered vehicle. You can make your fuel stack as big as you like, you can make your electric motor big, your battery big and you can really uh, enjoy yourself but with zero emissions. It's the win-win solution. But there's a problem with hydrogen, a big problem. It's very expensive to produce. At present, the cheapest way to make it is using petrol and other dirty fossil fuels, the very products it's meant to replace. But hydrogen's very difficult to create. It's not like oil that you pull out of the ground. I think in terms of getting it you know, out of the ground or out of the air or out of the water, it's no more difficult than petrol. It's just that the infrastructure doesn't exist today. And that's going to cost trillions of dollars. Well, it's certainly going to be a big investment. I think there's a whole bunch of opportunities Electric power supply companies who could never supply petrol before, they've got the chance to play. There are a whole bunch of people who can get into that business and uh, compete with the oil companies. In the meantime, there are already clean alternatives to the petrol car on the market, like hybrid vehicles that run on both petrol and electricity. When will I be able to go and fill up my hydrogen car at the hydrogen station? <laughs> the big question. Uh, we see that happening early next decade. I'm not sure I'd want to bet that it's 2010. You could see it in 2015. You could see it in 2020. Is this an example of a flight of fancy? This is what we have been programmed to think cars of the future are going to be like. And As to what the car, car of the future will look like, well, that's anyone's guess. Already there's the Aqua car making waves in England. Then there's America's flying car. Well, it's yet to fly and the French have come up with this stylistic indulgence. 
But one thing appears certain, the car of the future will be powered by hydrogen. Hydrogen really is the ultimate fuel. You can't go any better than hydrogen. It's the, the ultimate dream for emissions. It's quite amazing. It's space, it's science fiction. Something we've dreamed of for years is a zero emissions vehicle. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.